So, on the top table, we have Jake Mondello, Grixis Delver, versus Kevin King, Piloting Lands. Standard table, Rachel Otto is playing Green Red Monsters. Dan Jessup's playing Sultai Energy. But the middle seat is going to be a battle of some three-color decks. It's Jeskai Control versus Grixis Shadow. And really, what I'd say are some of the strongest the strongest players here in the, in the middle seat. Mm -hmm. Ben starting on Colonnade. He does have one Nahiri in his deck, able to get to the one of Torrential Gear Hulk if he can get it up to ultimate. No Emrakul. I love that progression. When Nahiri the Harbinger first hit the scene, there were all these four Nahiris, yeah. one Emrakul decks. Now it's one Nahiri for one Torrential Gear Hulk. Yeah. Now that means that half the time, though, when you alt the Nahiri, it's not sure whether or not the Torrential Gear Hulk will even be in your deck. I suppose you can get Snapcaster Mage anyway. Yeah. That's fine. Yeah, not exactly half time. It's actually more likely than not to be in your deck. <laughs> I have to correct my own math there. It's probably like two thirds to still be in your deck, something like that. Search for Escanta, turn two from Ben Stark. One of his few tap out plays. And Andrew will stubborn deny, stubbornly deny the search. That's a nice hit. Yeah. Search has really overperformed standard and modern. We even saw, we saw it in it Legacy. Legacy. Yeah. Being able to filter your draws every turn and then eventually just start generating card advantage. Really powerful enchantment. Now we'll see if Jessup can start setting up his proactive game plan. You do want to win rather quick in this matchup. Worth noting that he has some pretty bad cards in his main deck. He's already drawn one copy at least of Fatal Push. You see him thought scouring over a dismember there. Yeah. Those do not line up well against the four creature. It's going to shock. Maybe he can make a Tassiger here. He has five cards in the graveyard. That would demand an answer pretty quick. No, it's going to be the Serum Visions. He found that one off of Thought Scour. And two cards at the bottom. He might still be looking for a threat. I know you've played some Grixis Shadow. How do you feel about your Jeskai Control matchup? Keeping in mind, this is the, the do nothing build. Don't love the matchup. Kind of the more do-nothing they are, the worse it is for the Shadow deck. Sure, you don't care about Geist of St. Traft, but you do care about just more removal. Right. Also, just Supreme Verdict is absurdly good against you. I bet Nahiri's actually playable pretty decent in this matchup on yeah. their side. It's not bad. If you're not able to hit him in one shot with the Shadow, they just Nahiri it away. Back over to Jessup, plays a land, and he actually just has to pass, and Ben's going to be very happy with that. This is the kind of start that really favors the Jeskai control deck. Another land for Jessup. He's not going to utilize his lands as well as Stark. He doesn't have cards like Celestial Colony. He's really hoping to end the game with about four lands. Mm -hmm. He'll start with Inquisition of Kozilek. We'll get our first look at Ben's hand. In theory. He does, yeah, he has one main deck negate. That could could work here. And he actually has three main deck logic knots. He's going to logic knot for three. He delves two and taps one. So that's going to make it uncounterable, or make it resolve, mm -hmm. count the inquisition. Disguising your hand can be pretty valuable. If he has just like one path to exile for interaction yeah. with a potential death shadow, you do want to fight over that. Yeah, Andrew's going to fetch Shock. So now he's at 12. His Death Shadows can enter. Though he has to watch out. Any Death Shadow with only three toughness has got to be a concern. And Jessup pretty heavy on lands, actually. Yeah. Two more lands in hand. But yeah, at this point in time, Stark does have access to Lightning Bolt and Lightning Yelix that could just clean this Death Shadow up. Well, he made a Bloodstained Mire. So he could make it a 4-4. And Ben only has one red source at the moment, so mm -hmm. it, it's safe from the burn. Yeah, Jessup's going to want to leave that up yes. for the immediate future. Yeah, if he even cracks it on Ben's end step, then it, he, his shadow might just get tagged. Right. If he has, like, a Street Wraith in hand, that does change things a little bit. I like that, how Street Wraith is just this... Not doesn't, doesn't even use the stack to grow your Death Shadows. Just, <laughs> you know, there, there's no counterplay to it. It just hides out. Pretty powerful card, that Street Wraith. We didn't think so when it came out. Anything that is a zero mana cantrip is probably powerful. Just anything. 
And you do see Jessup not cracking that fetch land there, leaving it up, respecting a potential lightning bolt or helix. Game one is in. Kevin King takes it over Jake Mondello. Lands is up. King, of course, another player trying to go back to back. He was on the winning team from last week. The Lands deck finishing the first game. Never used to see that. Well, it depends. If you, if you get an opponent who just like conceded, conceded, <laughs> you don't, you're like, yeah, I don't want to. I don't want to do this. Right. This is miserable. I'm going to the casino. <laughs> And you see Andrew searches up a basic swamp. That's because there's only actually six mana producing lands in the deck. If he's searching up this basic swamp. It's not good. Well, was that or steam vents? That means steam vents is in his hand, you think? Could be in his hand. Could be that he wants to leave up the mire for it as a trick. Maybe he's bluffing and trying to get Stark to use a lightning bolt on the shadow. If Steam Vents is in his hand, that actually means the second Bloodstained Mire in play is not a real land. He would have nothing to find with it. It's a plus one, plus one pump spell. Yeah. Path to Exile from Stark. And that'll work. See whether or not... Andrew, yeah, he did not... He failed to find here. Checked. He does have the island. It's in his list, yep, but he did there. not get it. Yeah, that's mm. not one that you cut. Hmm. Great. Yeah, drawing a lot of lands. Yeah, it's in his hand. Gross. There it is. And, and this is one of the, I think, the weaknesses of the shadow deck. And you see it a lot of times. It, it, when players hit all six of get all six of their lands in play, they rarely win. Right. So they're not activating Tasker with that mana. No, and Ben's gonna get to clean up from here. Might take some time, but yeah, won't be hard to close the game. And you figure that this is a kind of matchup where Ben's going to need to win. Grixis Delver against Lands, especially when down a game, is not going to be favorable for his team. We've seen Green Red Monsters versus Sultai Energy already once today, and it looked pretty good for the Energy deck. Certainly close. Uh, so a win here seems pretty big for their team. Yes. Things should get better for Mondello in the sideboard games against King, but you don't like starting down one. And we go over to our standard. We have a result there. And yeah, Sultai Energy, still good. Scarab God, still good. It is Dan Jessup taking game one. That Scarab God card's mighty powerful. I like that Green Red Monsters is seeing play. I don't know that I like mid-range decks right now that aren't playing the Scarab God. Yes. They have some nice tools. Rekindling Phoenix. That's a card we've seen be pretty impressive. Yeah, Jade Light Ranger, new, in, new edition. Seems great. Mm-hmm. It's just so hard to pass on the Scarab God. That's, that's a card that just comes down and win, wins games by itself. We see Rachel Otto's actually playing the build with uh, two copies of Galto Primal Hunger in it as well. Fatal push from Andrew Jessup. So what's better than destroying all the lands in your deck is some fatal multiple fatal pushes against Jeskai. Uh, Andrew's draw has not given him the tools to compete here. His hand just doesn't actually do anything. He's got more fetch lands in it. Well, just that. That's great. Can deal more damage to himself, but only a little bit. Yeah. An is that another fatal push you just drew? That wouldn't be great. So his hand is just two more fatal pushes and more fetch lands? This is... <laughs> I mean, okay. Well, at least you get this one out of the way. <laughs> You're going to get <laughs> just get all your bad draws, concentrate them all in one game. Right. Don't want to see anything like this in game two or three. Ben, kind of, he, he's not a shrug on his side. He has to just keep passing. See, now he starts to go to work here. I'll lightning bolt you. I'm pretty sure Ben gets to keep passing. Lightning bolt, torrential gear hulk. Can't stubborn denial this bolt one. Bolt again. Bolt again. Path bolt my again. gear hulk. Send the message. <laughs> this is my end step ramp spell. Ramp and growth. My turn. Six mana with flash. Great. <laughs> Stubborn Denial, your flashback lightning bolt. Okay, I mean, that works. Chump block your Torrential Gear Hulk. He, that, that is what he's doing. He's stubbornly denying the lightning bolts. I cannot feel good about that. I mean, just the Celestial Colonnade with Andrew at 8 is a, is a concern right here. Mm -hmm. That one you can Fatal Push. So, you know, there's that. The Colonnade, just make it a 4-4. No restriction on targeting lands with the push. No. 
can't say the same with the torrential gear hole. I like that from Ben's. I assume you you've done so little. I just have to think that there's some fatal pushes left in your hand. Ander will block and dismember. Let's damage resolve first to play around lightning bolt, but he can't beat a counter spell here. No cryptic command. And he could play around cryptic, I guess, by just like dismembering before blocks. That's a bingo square. Counter what? draw. <laughs> Wait, you hit a bingo? Well, not a bingo. Okay. I get a bingo if we activate a desert. Won't be happening in this game. Okay. That's cool. <laughs> it's like, yeah. I mean, there. they banned the good deserts. Like, what are the odds? Uh, we sometimes see the green one get played. It's not good. I've been playing uh, the white one, Chef at Dunes. Sure. Torrential Gear Hulk hits Andrew down to one. He picks, draws a card. He's got a nice 12 12 for one that he picked up. There we go. Perfect. He's played into our trap. He's put us down to one. Path it. Stubborn Denial. The ha, path. ha Oh no. Hard oh, counter. Yeah, there's no way he has a. Oh, and the gate. Okay. Game two. Ben Stark up one game to zero here. He puts his team on the board by winning that modern, the first game in modern. We'll get some sideboards for the players. In just one minute, we'll be back with game number two of Andrew Jessup versus Ben Stark. StarCityGames.com Creature Collection presents a Crokin Crusader. Starting in December, get sleeves, playmats, player bundles, and more at go.starcitygames.com slash creature collection. We are back here. Going to look at some of the sideboards between the players, starting on Andrew Jessup's side. Of course, I think he's the main thing he's hoping for here is a better distribution of lands and spells. But he saw those <laughs> fatal pushes be really poor. Uh, what, what can he do to maybe make his deck more alive? Yes, we have three Collector Brutality, two Ceremonious Rejection, two Engineered Explosives, two Coligan's Command, two Liliana of the Veil, two Nile Spellbomb, an Is Static Caster, and a Vendillion Click. The Vendillion Click, pretty good in these kind of control matchups. Sure. And then mostly you're looking at this middle block here. Coligan's Command, Liliana of the Veil, Nihil Spellbomb. All of these cards are fine. Coligan's Command, kind of the best of the bunch. It seems like the goal of these cards isn't to be great in the matchup, but is to be not Not, not Fatal Push, not, not fatal Dismember. Push. Yeah. yeah. Yeah, that's largely what he's looking at. And I don't at. think he really wants, he has these team or battle rages in the main. I'd be surprised if he wants to keep those in also. Right, not great against this removal spell matchup. It's certainly, as we look at Benjamin Stark's sideboard, he gets more clean answers to Death Shadow. All right, so Ben Stark's sideboard, he's got three to spell, two Celestial Purge. Okay, that's a pretty clean answer. Two Ruined Halo, two Vendillion Click of his own, and some one ofs a Detention Sphere, an Elspeth's Son's Champion, that's the six mana Elspeth, an Engineered Explosives, a Negate, a Supreme Verdict, and a Wear 
tear. So this is a different story here. This sideboard is great for this matchup. Two Celestial Purge, excellent. Two Ruined Halo, also very good. Detention Sphere, that one's a little more expensive, but it certainly plays. Sure. And your Explosives, also very good. You can reach for Elspeth. Um, it costs a lot of mana, but once it's on the battlefield, it probably just wins the game on its own. Yeah, yeah. We've seen that uh, traditionally when when Shadow was big, straight blue-white control got popular, and Elspeth Sun's Champion was their finisher of choice. Right. Supreme Verdict, clearly very good. You can reach from a Dillion Click in this matchup, actually, with Jessup dealing as much damage to himself as he is. Yeah, the more he looks like a blue-white control deck, the better this is going to be. I, I think what comes out, like, Lightning Bolts and Lightning Helixes, those... Lightning Helix almost for sure. That one's, like, very inefficient. You can convert Lightning Bolt reasonably if Jessup does enough damage to himself. Yeah, he also has two Electrolyzes, which I'd be surprised if he wants those. Those ones are quite a bit weaker than the other red spells. One thing I do like is how this Jeskai control deck, and really Blue in general, has moved toward Logic Knot. A year ago, that was a card which didn't really see play in Modern. Mm -hmm. And it's become pretty staple in these blue-white decks. Yeah, it uh, just has more staying power than Mana Leak. Frequently, you'll be Logic Knotting for four or more. And, and it has, this is a smaller thing, but in the blue mirrors, you can't spell snare it, which is really nice. Okay. So, starting off again, Andrew will be on the play, but no one turn one play. Ben will have Serum Visions. Sometimes not always that. We can see things like Fetch Shock Thought Scour at the end of the first turn. is a pretty reasonable turn one for the, the Grixis deck. Mm -hmm. yeah, turn two Tassiger is a nice place to be. Thought Scour enables that. We'll see Fetch Shock and Opt end step here. So just close to 17. Still builds some of a graveyard. You see a Gurmag Angler in hand. Andrew topped a land, chose to draw one there, and then draws Thoughtseize. Fetch Thoughtscour would get him to Angler on this turn. Thoughtseize is not bad. In this matchup, I think Thoughtseize is good at just about any turn, though, right? There's not that much pressure for him to get it right now. Mm -hmm. Yeah, until he's establishing a threat. You don't really need the thought seize. You kind of just want to. Just want to clear the way for your angler. Right. See if the coast is clear. Uh, there are some hands where you thought seize them and you just think, oh, I don't know if I can actually win this game. If you see something like Path to Exile, Celestial Purge, Snapcaster Mage, just all those cards. So he's actually going to lead on Collective Brutality. So that's a desired spell. He's going to pick the take, the, the duress mode. Hmm. And we'll get a look at Ben's hand. He's got Serum Visions. Logic Knot. Uh, of note here, he's got, he has no more lands yet. A Celestial Purge, he has kept in the Electrolyzes. A Secure the Wastes, a Detention Sphere, and a Cryptic Command. So Stark has already scried a card to the top. Okay, so that's a land, right? Very high chance that that's a land. Sometimes you want to go for the Serum Visions when your opponent's a little bit landlocked. And to be fair, this hand does need more than just one more land to function. I imagine you're kind of looking at Celestial Purge versus Serum Visions. If you think you can get a threat online on the following turn and fight over some of this stuff and count on Stark fumbling a little bit with his mana, and the Magic Celestial Purge is a pretty Sam good take. Yeah, I'm almost and certain it's between those two cards, though. So we know that Jessup has the Gourmet Angler. Definitely wants to try to protect that. And he goes for the Celestial Purge. You'll probably see Stark lead on All Serum right. Visions here. And there's the island. He'll actually just pass. So this leaves out the possibility for Logic Knot this turn. Nothing else. Right. It does mean that he can't necessarily, he might miss a land drop. Mm -hmm. And the land he found was Basic Island, so it needs to be White Source if he wants to cast Detention Sphere. Yeah. If you're an Andrew's thought and you have another disc that Thought Seize, do you just want to Thought Seize the, the Serum Visions? No class Nile Spell Bomb. That play is reasonably against Logic Nod. You can just get in front of it. I guess you might just get Logic Nodded no matter what you do. Right. It's not super high impact. You might just let this resolve. He's going to logic knot away the Nile Spellbomb. 
Now Andrew can thought seize though. He got he got the counter spell. It's fine time to take yeah. that serum visions so, now. Yeah, he'll leave Ben with Electrolyze, Secure the Waste, Detention Sphere, Cryptic Command. These are spells that want three, three, four, and seven mana to cast. I'm and Jessup's not taking any chances. He's just going for the Detention Sphere. Okay. Possible he kind of just has Gurma Gangler and not much to back so it up. he's just taking the removal spells. Right. He's, uh, if you sure. have a white source, this hand can't win. Uh, it makes sense to go for the sphere. Yeah, sometimes you're not supposed, especially if you see no third land from Andrew, you're not supposed to try to get your opponent off lands. Like, it's nice if it happens, but really not necessary. Mm -hmm. You see Ben showing some wisdom on Andrew's side. Ben cast Serum Visions this turn, actually drew into a fetch land, and has the opportunity to descry a fourth land to the top. So, good on Andrew for the disciplined play. Yep. Another logic now was picked up for Stark. Ooh, okay. So it might be difficult to actually resolve the Gurmag Angler in the first place. If he has Stubborn Denial in this window, you can actually force spike the Logic Knot, and that's going to be good enough. But then you have to worry about getting Cryptic Command and recovering from that point. Just bouncing the Gurmag Angler can be very effective. Opt here, Jessup picks, picks up another land. I like Death Shadow, Gurmag Angler in the holdings. He hasn't seen a Supreme Verdict in Stark's hand. He might just want to get very aggressive and just get multiple threats on the battlefield. Gurmag Angler for Andrew Jessup. He's behind Opt and Thoughtseize. Sorcery Speed Snapcaster Mage and Instant Speed Snapcaster right. Mage. So here's the Logic Knot. It's going to hit the Gurmag Angler. Andrew has hope, was hoping to have cleared the way for the Angler, but that didn't happen. We'll see if he has a secondary threat. He's built down to 10, so Death Shadow is live here. Yeah, he does have a Shadow, and he has paved the way for that. Yeah, so down to perhaps even 7. He already knows about the Electrolyze. Yeah, that's not going to do much, though. You kind of want to get red source, assuming Coligan's commands in the deck. Yeah, I don't see much of a downside to just getting... Yeah, you're going to get one of your two shock lands, whether it's Steam Vents or Blood Crypt, and then just go to seven, cast a shadow. Yeah, got to be Blood Crypt. Okay. Oh, right, he has to... Right. Has to cast, <laughs> yeah. Steam Vents doesn't cast Death Shadow. Right. One match already in the books. Over on the standard table, Dan Jessup, two to zero... He is your winner, defeating Rachel Otto. Solta Energy. These Scarab God Energy decks are looking very good today. They're becoming more popular, and they are winning every time we're having them on. Yes. 6-6 six, six Death Shadow. Ben will untap. So some pressure now on Ben Stark. He, he'd really like to get this match for his team. Right now, their team is one game away from elimination. If Kevin King wins another game in Legacy, then Ben's going Ben's gonna to set down the cards. Yes. Stark found fourth land. All right. So, so you can start representing crypt Cryptic Command. Yep. It is there. It's untapped. Yep. He's kind of got to figure out a long-term plan for the Death Shadow. He can only try to tap it so long. If Jessup untaps and has Stubborn Denial, he can't reasonably even convert that much when it matters. Plays land and passes. Going back to Andrew, he's got a 6-6 six, six in play. He has another Death Shadow in hand. So he'll start with an attack for 6. It's three turn clock as Ben is at 18. We'll put him down to 12. And we'll see follow any if there's any follow-up here. He knows about Cryptic Command. This looks a lot like collective brutality mana. Sure. Here is the card. Doesn't really want to escalate it into a cryptic command. Yeah. Two life not mattering much anyway. Right, yeah. The, the non-duress mode's pretty yeah. meaningless. I guess in Death Shadow, you really don't, you never want to drain them for two. That's it's horrible. rare. It's rare. <laughs> I was like, wait, I don't want to go to nine. That's worse. He has drawn a second copy of Death Shadow, so he kind of just wants to see if the coast is clear. Doesn't want to get Supreme Verdict. Yeah. If he can cast a Death Shadow here, that's a two-turn clock. Yeah, and by... Still, 
Yeah, I like this. And right now, counter bounce, not an option from Ben. Andrew has black mana untapped. Right. This is a likely to draw out counter draw. Yeah. Yeah, I agree. And he's going to just let it resolve. Ah. Seems that Stark's electing to do some chump blocking with some Secure the Waste tokens. Okay. He also has a potential avenue to get lethal with Electrolyze plus Secure. So they did, what's the idea of not casting Cryptic Command here? Uh, is it just exactly what I just said. He so thinks he, he can possibly set up lethal or at least buy enough time with Secure. Oh, do you think we're, so we're trying to end step make, got, make He's trying to go aggro? I don't know if he makes the creatures just yet, but you might see the end step electrolyze. If you can make four tokens, that is significantly different. Quite a bit better than three tokens. Yeah, and another Death Shadow from Anders. That's going to take the aggro plan really off the table for Ben. If the thought was making three end step one ones, hitting your opponent down to four, electrolyzing him to two, maybe drawing to a Snapcaster Mage to win, that's off. You do get to set up a few chump blocks if you secure here anyway. But yeah, you're right. Way harder to convert with beatdowns. And with only so, many, so much mana available, it does make some sense for Stark to let the Cryptic go, just because he's so far behind on board. If you wait until next turn to secure, maybe you get Stubborn Denialed, too. Three one ones for Ben. He still end-steps it. Goes to 11. Draw here. Ooh, that is and a nice is draw. Is that engineered explosives? I believe it is. Oh, my. Okay, well that's quite the draw. Explosives on two. Talk about a way to punish not only Andrew playing the second shadow, but also to leave Ben with the soldiers. It may have been his single best draw there. Yes. And Jessup down to four. And Stark still has that Electrolyze. That's going to be yeah. lethal next turn. Whoa, okay. From what looks like a difficult situation, Ben Stark may have just drawn his way to victory. Wow. It's not a lot that Jessup is really even drawing to. He, he really only has cards that make it so the card he was already holding has to be relevant here. You know, you can make a creature and block one of these tokens, but then just two get through and Electrolyze finishes him off. And, yeah, we'll see if he has any plays here. He's thinking about just passing. Yeah, that is the play. He'll pass. Ben swings three. Here's Snapcaster Mage. Targets, we'll see, probably opt. I mean, there's a lot of temptation for Ben to just electrolyze away. Yeah, one, one, Andrew has no answer. So Ben Stark takes the game here, 2-0. He's your winner in the modern match. A surprise comeback there in the second game. It was a matchup which we know was good. For ben was up in, but it looked like we were going to head to a third. Yeah. And you really saw the power of the 1x secure the waste in these Jeskai yeah. decks. Yeah, he turned around the aggro so quickly on Andrew. Mm -hmm. So that's going to bring everything over to Kevin King versus Jake Mondello. Kevin's playing Lands and Jake's playing Grixis Delver. Remember, this is an elimination match. Both teams are at three and two. So, losing team will be going home. King was your champion last weekend. Mm -hmm. Yeah, this is for their tournament life. This is a fine matchup. Kevin's up a game. Land's usually okay against Grixis Delver. Well. And <laughs> it's fine here, too. And it looks like we see a handshake there, a short-lived third match. A big credit to Ben Stark on the match. Well played. Great comeback. But it is going to be the end of the tournament for his team. So they will be going home. For the team of Kevin King, Andrew Jessup, and Dan Jessup, they're at 4-2. and two, Three more wins, and they'll make it into day two. Yeah. Kevin King looking for the trophy repeat on the weekend. Yeah. For the Jessup brothers, they top forward last weekend, looking to improve slightly on that. All right. So... That's going to do it for round number six. We have three more matches, and really a lot of these are going to be elimination matches with so many